some of you may have follow-up questions. In a form like this, there's no way for us to get to uh, everything that we'd like to get to. There's no way for the, the candidates themselves to explain every single thing that's on their mind. And so when we get done, as you see uh, the conclusion and wrap up, you'll have 10 to 15 minutes at the end to mix and mingle with each of the candidates and ask maybe additional questions that you'd like. And so if you have thoughts as we go through this, feel free to jot those down. We're not going to ask them of you for the candidates, but you may want to do that in the format afterwards. All right, uh, next question. Um, an open-ended uh, open question, ladies. Besides education, two other priorities that you will be working on if you're elected and go to the state legislature. Again, two priorities besides education that you're passionate about, that you like, and you'll be working on. We'll start with Rosemary. So one of my passions as well is I'm a small business owner. I own Hollywood Schoolhouse in Woodenville. I do weddings and I know what it's like to be a small business person. My husband is a, was a landscaper and a businessman and my five sons are all involved in either nurseries or landscaping or recycling businesses. And my one daughter is a massage therapist. So every one of my children are um, small business owners. If we are going to grow this economy, if we're going to get people back to work, we have to grow small business. One of the best things we did in the Senate this year was we invested in a capital budget that actually brought to this state almost 2,000 jobs. Building the University of Washington Bothell Science Building was a huge win for us in Bothell because it was our turn in all of the college system but also it would expand the University of Washington Bothell for our local students, our students in the region, and those STEM jobs I've talked to you about, science, technology, engineering, math. University of Washington Bothell is a strong economic driver for this region. It's helping us to have people locate here for the high-tech care corridor to expand because we have the biomed, biotech, it also is, is, is helping our little main street to grow and our big configuration down on 522, 527. Bothell is in its best point that it's ever been in its life, and the jobs that we are creating here are important. So let me tell you, last July my business was at 50% at Hollywood Schoolhouse. I let my management go and I took over. I knew what it took to build those jobs. I knew what it took to attract bri bribes back to my business. And you know what? I'm at 100% and over today. And I have now a full crew working again. That's what it takes, is it, for all of us to support each other in this community. Belong to the chambers, belong to each other, and to build our small businesses. That's where people will go to work. So whether we think about the larger capital investments, the roads, the tunnels, the science buildings, we can put our people back to work. And that's what's my passion and what's critically important to me. I guess my other thing, and I have maybe another minute or so, is my pride in developing Lake Washington Institute of Technology. Lake Washington was a community college, and they did such wonderful things for students. They got hands-on learning, and then they had them get their uh, AA degrees or certification, and then they went into the four-year degree. I helped them build those four-year degree programs. I changed their name last year with them to the Institute of Technology, and we are going to have another MIT in Lake Washington. And you know what? They are going to lead us forward with many graduates that will be part of our workforce, whether they get a certification or a four-year degree or whether they become those technology people in the future. That's my excitement about what I do.
Interestingly enough, NFIB and AWB, both associations for small businesses, have endorsed me in this race for the Senate. I received their endorsement because my opponent has an abysmal voting record for small businesses. This is one reason that a local small business owner ran against her in the first place, is here in the audience tonight. I appreciate the fact that small businesses have a struggle to survive in this state. I'm actually having to deal with my father's business in another state, and I am grateful it is not here. I'd be closing the doors and wouldn't survive. So when we talk about this passion for small businesses, I really believe that we need to give small businesses the ability to survive and stay in this state and hire more people. When I first filed to run, I was inundated by owners of small businesses who thanked me and then started uploading all of their issues with the current system. And they weren't asking for much. I mean, when I met with some of them and said, so you want to change that? They went, oh my God, no, I just want a little relief. They're not even asking for much. So because of my opponent's record, small business owners are becoming their champion. And I'm proud to say that's one of my passions as well. I would say my second passion which leads absolutely from an irritation is special sessions. I would like to see us stop having special sessions attached to every session. <laughs> stop. <laughs> so, you know, every year we've got to have another special session, or two, or three in the case of the last one. And every special session, Everybody's collecting a per diem. So, you know, my, I started off this campaign with one campaign promise to a friend of mine, and I said, you know, if I get down there and I'm in the Senate and it even looks like we're going to special session, you have my promise, I'm not taking the per diem. I'm tired of those and I want to see that in. I want to see Olympia do the job they're supposed to do in the time allotted. Oh, one thing has bothered me. When Resume referred to the million kids in this state and how um, all of those kids deserve an education and somehow charter schools were going to cheat some children from that, I find it interesting that she followed up with comments about creating STEM schools. STEM schools are not serving everyone in the state. Just saying. All right, we have time for one last question. So recently, uh, back to education, recently there was a teacher principal evaluation uh, that went on a pilot program around the state. Each district has now been given the opportunity to implement that when they want and how they want. And it allows now teachers to work with principals to be evaluated. The question for you two ladies is what criteria do you think should be to measure the performance of a teacher and how do you recommend it to be implemented in each district as they roll that out? One more time, what criteria do you think should be used to measure the performance of the teachers and how do you recommend it to be implemented in each district? We'll start with uh, Don and then Rosemary. Well, I think that Being a special ed, I was a special ed teacher, I always had um, measurement that I measured up to by the end of the year. I wrote an IEP on every student I had, and I'm not afraid of being held accountable to the work I did through the school year for each and every one of those students. I wasn't ever afraid of that, nor when I lived in Denver and taught in Denver, was I afraid of being evaluated by how I had brought my children along and even created my own evaluation in Denver with the help of my principal. And we just held ourselves accountable to that. It didn't seem to be this big of a deal. But um, one of the things that 
I did as president of the board was lead the charge with the board to tie our superintendent to our student goals and expectations. I think that that makes an even bigger difference to the way the system works. A superintendent has, in our case, 19,000 children. So that's a much bigger sampling than a grab bag of 30. And I think that that's scary for teachers when they look at, okay, I've got 30 kids, I can't tell what's coming in my classroom, and how are you gonna hold me accountable? The biggest flaw I found in the um, teacher and principal evaluation bill that came out in this last session was that the, um, the, the evaluation piece is, has three sections tied to student growth, and yet student growth isn't defined at all. So that means student growth is defined 295 different ways across the state of Washington as it's pushed out to local school districts to be bargained locally with their EAs or their teachers unions. And that doesn't provide consistency. And I think it just greatly misses the mark with why you even have a teacher or principal evaluation system. Well, I'm proud to say this is another part of our education reform movement. And that is Senate Bill 6696, which was my bill to create the teacher principal evaluation system. We were very proud and excited to say this is our next step in education reform. We have standards, we have assessments, and now we need to be able to measure whether our teachers are a high quality teacher in every classroom, which is what we need to help students succeed. But the evaluation system is not about saying, are you a level one, two, three, four? The evaluation system is to say, where are you on the scale and how, how can we help you grow professionally? In every business that we have, we invest in people to grow professionally. That is our goal, whether I'm a small business owner and I want to teach my people more about technology, or why teach them more about customer service. That's the goal. Let me start you here at a level two or a level three or a level four and let's grow from here. Professional development, let's get you to be the best you can. And you know what? I will tell you this and the teachers will agree with me. If you're a level one and you've been a level one for too long and you haven't grown, we need to tell you that there's a better career out there for no one wants a teacher, and either does that teacher, want to be in that classroom if they aren't seeing success. So we know that this evaluation system is about putting a high quality teacher in every classroom. You know, there's no perfect bill. Trust me, you can write a bill from here to forever. It can be the affordable health care bill, which is thousands and thousands of pages, or it can be 700 pages of 2261. The idea about legislation is you pass it and you progress. You improve it over time. We will improve the evaluation system over time. It's not set in stone. The best way that we do it is by allowing our teachers and principals to be on the ground, to work together, to have a shared responsibility, and to build this system. And you know what? We won't be a Chicago because of that. We will build it together from the ground up with the people that we value who are the teachers. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. Again, in, uh, in quick close up, uh, you'll have some opportunity to mix and mingle. There's some refreshments there in the back. Uh, hopefully, our candidates will stick around to answer any additional questions that you may be, uh, have come up with that you'd like clarified or simplified or answered. Um, and so take some time to, uh, to get to know them and to ask them those questions. Again, we want to thank each of you for coming. Uh, thank you, candidates, for being here. And uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.